It is a significant impact that we are moving our 737 rate from the 52 a month to the 57 a month we had assumed in the July time frame to 42 a month through, uh, through September, and we uh, assume a push out. So we are cutting 2019 free cash flow and EPS estimates, but we view the 737 as a transitory issue in that they will eventually deliver the 5,000 of backlog. There will be some cancellations, but this is mostly transitory, and we're, we're keeping an eye on the longer term story here. What about the liability issues, Sheila? Because unlike the Dreamliner, we're talking about almost 400 fatal fatalities and lawsuits that I believe have in some cases already been filed. Sure. So there is a lives lost element. There will be some insurance claims and that will be handled. Um, I think, you know, for Q2, we will assume some profit losses given you are cutting uh, volumes drastically. You're not delivering aircraft, so you'll, you won't earn on that. So we're focused on the free cash flow impact from that perspective at the moment. And Phil, we also see not just Boeing affected, but American and, and Southwest. Uh, for example, Southwest was downgraded this morning due to near-term right. earnings risk related to the grounding of the MAX fleet, which that analyst, again, now believes will run into the summer months. How much of a headache is this for the airlines? Oh, it's a headache. I mean, for Southwest, it's about 4% of their fleet here in the United States. Now, is that going to kill the company? No, it's not going to kill the company, but it's certainly going to be uh, a factor in the 2Q earnings, and that's why you see those shares that are under pressure. And remember, the summer travel season is the peak travel season. So now as we start to see the MAX potentially being off the books and not flying in June or July, as some people are starting to talk about, that becomes a bigger issue.